Hi, my name is Mike, and I hope that as we study the Word of God together, that it will en enrich you and empower you and help you to see what God is doing in your life. You know, when I went through the process of getting ordained, it was very rigorous. And I remember the hours spent studying, uh, writing you know, papers, uh, preparing for exams, uh, being interviewed by a panel of different pastors, uh, and then even preaching in front of different proctors uh, and getting uh, critiqued uh, about my, my sermon, my content, and all these things. And after I finally passed all of that, it was such a relief. And it was such an honor to go and walk down that aisle uh, with knowing that I would be ordained for ministry and that I would have my family and my friends all there to congratulate and to celebrate um, that process together. And on that day when I was getting ordained, uh, each of us were given a specific robe. And we knew that it, that robe was meant for us because inside of it, uh, stitched was our names. It was uh, placed inside of it so that we knew that it was ours. And as we're going to look in this passage, it will talk about the garment of the priest and how it was important and all the details that went into it and how it represents our God. Exodus chapter 28, verses 15 through 30. Fashion a breastpiece for making decisions, the work of skilled hands. Make it like the ephod of gold and of blue, purple and scarlet yarn, and of finely twisted linen. It is to be square, a span long and a span wide, and folded double. Then mount four rows of precious stones on it. The first row shall be carnelian, crystallite, and beryl. The second row shall be turquoise, lapis lazuli, and emerald. The third row shall be jacinth, agate, and amethyst. The fourth row shall be topaz, onyx, and jasper. Mount them in gold filigree settings. There are to be twelve stones, one for each of the names of the sons of Israel, each engraved like a seal with the name of one of the twelve tribes. For the breastpiece, make braided chains of pure gold like a rope. Make two gold rings for it and fasten them to two corners of the breastpiece. Fasten the two gold chains to the rings at the corners of the breastpiece, and the other ends of the chains to the two settings, attaching them to the shoulder pieces of the ephod at the front. Make two gold rings and attach them to the other two corners of the breastpiece on the inside edge next to the ephod. Make two more gold rings and attach them to the bottom of the shoulder pieces on the front of the ephod, close to the seam just above the waistband of the ephod. The rings of the breastpiece are to be tied to the rings of the ephod with blue cord connecting it to the waistband so that the breastpiece will not swing out from the ephod. Whenever Aaron enters the holy place, he will bear the names of the sons of Israel over his heart on the breastpiece of decision as a continuing memorial before the Lord. Also put the Urim and the Thummim in the breastpiece so they may be over Aaron's heart whenever he enters the presence of the Lord. Thus Aaron will always bear the means of making decisions for the Israelites over his heart before the Lord. Uh, so this is a very interesting portion of the passage, and we see what is precious uh, to God. And I remember growing up seeing pictures of the high priest and what they look like. And I remember thinking that they kind of uh, look like soldiers based on uh, the things that they had to wear. And looking at their garments, it's described here, and I feel like it's confirmed uh, through the pictures that I saw that even though I've seen a picture of what the high priest wore, uh, I never really paid attention uh, to the details that were written as we looked at and examined in, uh, this, in this portion of the passage. And after reading it, I realized that 
there are details in it that I never realized or I had overlooked previously. Uh, so on the breastplate that they were to wear, there were four rows with three gemstones each. And uh, what those gemstones represented were the different, the 12 tribes of Israel. And so all of them were placed on the breastplate that the high priest would wear when they performed their duties um, uh, as service to God and to his people. And so when the high priest would wear that breastplate, uh, he was wearing the names of Israel um, over his heart. Uh, not only did the high priest work for uh, the people, but he was also to, to love the people of God. Uh, and so this made me think about a, a few things, that uh, for pastors, uh, we have this calling by God to love and to shepherd God's people. And that is uh, one of our, our mandates, that we are called to love them, shepherd them, teach them, guide them, help them to recognize the voice of God. Uh, and so pe pastors are not just random people who volunteer their services, but they have this calling and this responsibility to lead God's people. Uh, not only that, but uh, pastors are called to love um, God's people. And I would have to say that uh, it'll, you would, it's almost impossible to become a pastor if you don't love people. And I remember coming across uh, one person that served as a pastor. And as I was getting to know him, as I was asking him questions and finding out more about him, uh, he basically said that he didn't like people. And I was very shocked. And I was like, then how are you pastoring? How can you do any kind of ministry if you don't have love? Uh, because uh, I was always taught that uh, people don't care what you know until you show them that you care and that you love them. Uh, and so after listening to this, you know, after a few months, uh, he decided not to continue on in ministry. Uh, so I think that shows that a part of ministry is learning to care, to love uh, the people that are under you uh, so that they can feel God's love through the things that you share with them and the things that you tell them and challenge them uh, with. And I'm reminded that the role and the responsibility of a pastor, uh, when I read 1 Peter 5, verses 2 to 3, when it says, Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lord, lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And to me, I, I hold those verses very dear. I try to uh, emulate that. I try to make that uh, of who I am um, as a pastor. And I believe this sums up what it means to shepherd God's flock. They're called to care for them, to lead them because God has called them into this position. Uh, and so seeing the names of Israel on the, on the breastplate um, also reminds me of how Jesus is our high priest. And so when I look at Christ, I'm reminded of how much He loves me and how much He loves you uh, in the same way. That He gladly and willingly gave up His life uh, on our behalf. And it's pretty amazing when you think about what He did for us on the cross. And so uh, on each of the stones were inscribed the names of the 12 tribes. And so seeing those names, that they were precious uh, to the sight of the Lord. And so for us, our names too are written uh, on the heart of God. And that we too are loved by Him, that He cares for us so much that He sent us His Son. And then lastly, we see that there is discernment that is being shown through this breastplate of judgment, where there are two stones uh, called the Urium and the Thumium, Thumium. And at first, I didn't know what the purpose of these two stones were, but after reading about it, they were used for discernment. Uh, when they qu asked God a question, they would reach into their breastplate and take out the stone, and the answer would be there, either yes 
or no. And for us as Christians today, uh, we have the Word of God that can guide us and help us and provide us the sermon on questions that we have in life. So let us be thankful for the things that God has given us so that we too can live a life uh, like a priest uh, here on earth. And as you guys read this passage and you look at the garment of the high priest, uh, for them it was Aaron. Uh, but for us, when we read that, we should be reminded of Jesus Christ, who is our great high priest forever. And that what he does for us, that he has our names uh, written on his heart and that he fights for us. He is the one who prays for us and that intercedes so that we can have the ability to worship God and have access to God the Father through, through Jesus, that we no longer have to do the sacrifices or follow the laws of the Old Testament. But this helps us to appreciate uh, just what needed to be done in order that we can have uh, this freedom and ability to communicate and to be with God the Father. Uh, may that bring you great joy and may that help you to, uh, to understand the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. Uh, so let, let us pray for that. God, we are so grateful, uh, Lord, for all the sacrifice. We thank you that you are seated at the right hand of God and that you are there uh, fighting for us and uh, speaking on our behalf. And we thank you that you do all these things out of love for us. Help us to love you and help us to love others uh, just as much. We love you and we thank you. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. <music>